Chunk 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 Hello everybody and welcome to another exciting episode of Practical MDO with me, John Yasin. Today we're talking about nonlinear and linear systems and solvers. Now this is a doozy of a topic. I normally hate having a main message that is two separate points. I try to keep it to one point. But I think it's important to have two separate but related points. So here they are. There's a lot of text on the screen, but I will walk you through it. My first main message is defining what nonlinear and linear systems are. In open MDAO terms, your nonlinear system is your model or the governing system of equations. These are the things that you're trying to model, it's the actual physical processes that you're capturing in equations. Your linear system, on the other hand, is a behind the scenes linearization of the model. This is only used to compute derivatives, and these derivatives are then used for Newton solvers or for optimizers. We'll get more to these definitions later, and I'll give some concrete examples. My second point here is what do we do with these nonlinear and linear systems? You need to use a nonlinear solver when there's backwards coupling or implicit systems. And on the other hand, if you're trying to use derivatives in your model, you need an accompanying linear solver. I'll get more into what that means and what this also looks like in this lecture. So this has to do with the modeling construction, but it also does influence how we do optimization and differentiation of our systems. In this lecture, I'll first cover what are nonlinear and linear systems, give some context behind those and show some examples, and then I'll explain how to solve those systems using nonlinear and linear solvers. I'll really focus on the differences between them. This whole lecture is focused on, you know, showing nonlinear and then showing a linear system and explaining the differences between them. If you want to go into the details of the theory of a specific nonlinear solver or otherwise, this is not really the lecture for that. I'll have some links below to other relevant lectures. So first, what are nonlinear and linear systems? I'm going to tell you that in the most general case, you have both nonlinear and linear systems for multidisciplinary models. What I mean by this is that both the nonlinear and linear systems are relevant for complex multidisciplinary models. You'll need to understand how to represent them and solve them to do gradient-based optimization. So I said this in the intro, but I really want to drive this point home. I want to just drill this into your minds. A nonlinear system is your physical model. Physical is in quotes here because, of course, it's a digital representation of your physical model. But it's the systems of equations that are representing your model. These are the actual physics that you're trying to model. It may be the, the airflow over a wing or a wind turbine blade, or it may be the weights of an aircraft. It might be the magnetic field and electric currents going through a motor. When I say a nonlinear system is your physical model, even if your physical model is fully linear, it is still called a nonlinear system in OpenMDO. That might be crazy. That might sound crazy. But it's, it's called that because the nonlinear system in OpenMDO is as arbitrarily general as it can get. It can include linearity and it can include nonlinearity. On the other hand, the linear system is simply a linearized approximation of your model. This linear system is only used to compute the derivatives of your model. What I mean by this is that if you have a nonlinear system and you're not using a Newton solver and you're not using gradient-based optimization, you don't have to worry about a linear solver. Now, of course, this is good practice to always consider this and think about, okay, if I'm going to be using this model in other places, will I need a linear solver? If the answer is yes, then you should probably put one in. I'm going to say that 99% of the time you need a nonlinear and linear system for multidisciplinary models. Now, what do I mean by this? Let me kind of walk through a graphic here. So on the left, we have a nonlinear system and a corresponding nonlinear solver. On the right, we have a, a linear system and a linear solver. Now, each one of these systems you can think of, in this case, as having three components. On the left-hand side here, we're computing F, G, and H out of each one of these three components, respectively. They can look like anything. They can look like nonlinear curves or hypersurfaces. In the bottom right, we see this component is just a straight line, so it's actually a, a kind of linear physics model. But again, because we're talking about our physics model, it's on the nonlinear system side of things. On the right-hand side, the linear system has a kind of linearization of each one of these models at those specific points. So if we're getting f, g, and h on the nonlinear side, we're getting the derivatives of f, g, and h on the linear side. We kind of see the grayed out idea of the nonlinear system on the right-hand side, and then we see this dashed pink line, which shows the linearization at each one of the design points. Now again, both these nonlinear and linear systems exist within your model. You need both for doing gradient-based optimization. The nonlinear system helps you get the actual values for your physical model, and the linearized system helps you get the derivatives for your model. To really drive home this point, let me show another example. And this is a graphic that I show in a few other lectures. I think it's really important to kind of revisit this and think about what it means. So first I will show you a system model of an air structural design tool. Here we have the aerodynamics and the structures and a nonlinear block Castell solver 
in orange. Now, at the same time that there's this nonlinear system model in OpenMGO, there's also a corresponding sort of bizarro linear system model. This linear system can have different solvers. Again, you can imagine that if you have a linear system, it might be easier to solve it using different methods than the nonlinear system, and I'll talk more about that later. But just know that behind the scenes in OpenMGO, we have two different representations of the model. One is used for analysis, and anything that you have in your compute methods in OpenMDO would be within this nonlinear system model. Again, these are the actual equations, the system of equations that you're modeling your physics with. And then on the linear system side, it's anything that you're using to compute partial derivatives. So to be very clear about this, when you have like an aerodynamics component and you have compute, that part belongs to the nonlinear system model. If you have compute partials, that part belongs to the linear system model. OpenMDO does a great job of tracking both these models at the same time and kind of hiding some of the details from you so you don't have to worry about constructing two separate models. And of course, we need both the analysis and the derivatives for gradient-based optimization. Let me now give an example of a very simple graphical nonlinear system. Here we have a nonlinear system. We have this kind of wavy line and we have a very straight line here, y equals five. If we want to solve this system, that means find where they intersect graphically, we have to use a nonlinear solver. If we were to look at this nonlinear system and construct a linearization of it at a certain design point, it would look like this. These red lines represent the equivalent linear model. Now again, this linear model is being evaluated at a certain point. In this case, it's x equals 2. But you can think of the linear model as simply being a local linearization of your nonlinear system. Now again, this, this linearization, really think of it as just gradients or derivatives. These are almost synonyms in this case. Now I'm going to throw you something here. If we have two straight lines here, these are perfectly straight lines. It is a linear system here. Like I mentioned before, this is still called a nonlinear system in OpenMDO. If your actual physics that you're modeling result in a linear system, in the most general sense, it will be called a nonlinear system. Now take a look at these linearizations here. Hey, they're exactly straight on the line, so it's kind of to be expected. In the case of when your physics are actually linear, your nonlinear system becomes rather simple to solve. Usually nonlinear solvers do a fantastic job at solving linear systems because it's much easier than what they're used to. So now I have some examples of things that are called nonlinear systems in OpenMDO. Some of these are linear, like I've tried to highlight here. So finite element analysis, or FEA, is a nonlinear system in OpenMDO. It is a system of equations that models physics that we're trying to, to represent digitally. In the same realm, vortex lattice methods for aerodynamics are also a nonlinear system, despite being fully linear. Another higher fidelity example would be computational fluid dynamics, or CFD. This is a nonlinear system in OpenMDO. And any sort of economics or cost models, Oftentimes these may appear linear. You have like a ticket price for an air flight or you're selling a certain number of wind turbines and it's a directly linear problem. But at the same time, this is still called a nonlinear system in OpenMDO because these are actual physics or the performance that you're trying to measure. If you were to construct any one of these in OpenMDO, I want to be very clear, there's also a corresponding linear system that is computing gradient information. Okay, so I've talked a little bit about what nonlinear and linear systems are. Now I told you that we need to solve these systems. Let's talk about the differences between nonlinear and linear solvers. Here's one example that I'm borrowing from example 3.8 in Engineering Design Optimization by Martins and Ning. Here there's a simple system of nonlinear equations, in this case x equals y squared and y equals 1 over x. Shown graphically, this is what it looks like. Now on the right hand side we have a graph of the residual on the y-axis and iterations of the solver on the x-axis. So the whole idea here is if we use a nonlinear solver, in this case a Newton solver, we can converge to where we know the solution is. Graphically we can see it's at 1 comma 1, but again the solver has no notion of where this actually is. It can only query the functions at certain points. Let's walk through this. So here's our initial guess, it's at 2 comma 3. We then have one Newton step, which based on the function values and their derivatives, moves to here. Now remember the Newton solvers actually need the derivative information to converge the nonlinear system. What this means is that the linear system is being converged first to provide the derivatives, and then these are being passed to the nonlinear Newton solver in this case. Now from here, we query the functions and their derivatives again, and we move closer to the solution. If we take a look on the right-hand side, the norm of the residual is decreasing slowly, and the Newton solver continues. It gets closer and closer to what we know is the graphical solution of this problem, and as you can see on the right-hand side, the residual continues to decrease. And in fact, it decreases at a greater and greater rate as it settles into the Newton Basin. Now, I'm simply showing this as a graphical example of how a nonlinear solver operates. Starting from an arbitrary point, it cannot just jump straight to the solution. Because the derivatives of the system change in the design space because it's a nonlinear system, we cannot a priori know exactly where the solution is just by understanding the first order derivatives. We instead have to use derivative information to know where to move in the design space and query the functions again. 
Now I want to talk about linear solvers. If we have a linear system, you know, generically AX equals to B, let's talk about how we'd solve that. Here we have two straight lines. Again, it's a linear system. On the right-hand side, we're going to have the norm of the residual like we did before. Now let's start at an arbitrary point, in this case, one comma four. And if we move towards the solution here, oh my gosh, it does it in one step. How is this possible? Well, it's possible because we have derivative information and because it's linear, it does not change anywhere in the design space. We know exactly where to move to based on a single evaluation of the gradients. This is inherently what makes linear systems different than nonlinear systems. And by effect, linear solvers different than nonlinear solvers. A nonlinear solver must be able to handle any arbitrary set of equations, whereas a linear solver can exploit and use the information about the derivatives to very quickly get to a solution. Now again, revisiting this AX equals to B system. Direct methods are the standard way to solve linear systems. You might remember solving systems of equations using Gaussian elimination. The direct method of solving linear systems is much like this. There's something called an LU factorization, where you transform the A matrix into lower and upper triangular matrices. This allows you to directly solve the linear system. Now there's no way to directly solve a nonlinear system. However, we can take advantage of the linear nature of linear systems and use a direct method. Now I say this is the standard way to solve linear systems. If you have an extremely large linear system where it's very sparse, I'd recommend using an iterative solver. These would perform better, especially when using very large sparse problems. Now I'm going to flash up here just the, the kind of linear and nonlinear solvers available. This comes from figure 3.13 in engineering design optimization, and it just shows a, a kind of overview of a lot of different relevant linear and nonlinear solvers. This is also shown in the types of solvers and when to use them lesson. I simply want to highlight here that there are many different solvers within each one of these categories. The ones that I showed you here today, the Newton solver and direct methods are just a subset of many different solver types th that are available. So we hashed through this lesson. I had two main points. The first was talking to you about what are nonlinear and linear systems. The next was kind of detailing the difference between nonlinear and linear solvers. I want to drive home the point that in general, for coupled multidisciplinary systems, you need both nonlinear and linear solvers. If you're not getting convergence in your optimization or something doesn't make sense with your derivatives, it might be an issue with the solver. I recommend you check those out. We have associated lessons about how to debug solvers and what this means. Now this last sentence here, I say you must use the appropriate solvers to resolve coupling and compute derivatives accurately. What I mean by this is just use a nonlinear and linear solver for your model. I would say in general, it's good to approach a model assuming that you need both types of solvers. Unless you know otherwise, that's a safe assumption. To recap this lesson, I really just wanted to, to drive home the differences between nonlinear and linear systems and solvers. Please check out some other linked lectures in the description below. I also have a link to the accompanying Python notebook, which has some examples in OpenMDO about using nonlinear and linear solvers and what their performance looks like. As always, please hit those like and subscribe buttons if you've liked what you've seen today. Guys, gals, and non-binary pals, thank you for watching.